Hi everybody, I'm giving this transparent overlay thing a try again. My aging graphics card can't quite handle it sometimes and I end up with this annoying sync issue between audio and video. So if you're seeing my lovely face, it means my graphics card hasn't been thrown in the ocean yet. When work began on remotely installing NixOS and NixConfig earlier in 2024, we used config vars to establish some constants across our hosts, such as the primary username, as well as flags to indicate the desired host states. This came about specifically because of the need to differentiate between building a host to full specifications or to a stripped down minimal spec during remote installation so we could set up secrets. And thus the is minimal Boolean flag was the first config bar. As the contents of config bars grew, it continued to serve a useful purpose, but in a manner that was increasingly too static. Aside from a few flags, the rest of the variables were effectively global constants dictating the entirety of the next config. The desire for a more elegant solution led to a significant refactoring away from config bars and towards an option-based Nix module we called host spec. The result is a module of options that can be enabled and customized on a per host basis. The refactor to host spec also introduced support for hosts that run Darwin instead of NixOS, which is where we'll start because it necessitated some anatomical changes to the NixConfig. So the first question you might have is, what the fuck is Darwin? In brief, it is Apple's open source operating system that makes up the core of Mac OS. You can learn more about it at puredarwin.org. I was hesitant about muddying my config with support for Darwin-based hosts because I don't own a Mac anymore. I'm frankly not a fan of Apple products for many reasons that I won't get into, but I have to admit that Hexley, Darwin's platypus mascot, is pretty darn cute. So. The decision was made. But seriously, I know there are a lot of people who use Apple hardware who are also interested in using Nix, and I want Nix to succeed. One of the main challenges in supporting both Darwin and NixOS is that not everything that runs on NixOS will run for Darwin. We're faced with scenarios where some of the config works for one or the other or both. To address this, we added some platform specific directories, and as you'll see later, some platform specific Nix files as well. To help facilitate distinguishing between Linux and Darwin host configs in our code, we've added two directories to house the respective host configurations. All of the host directories that would have been stored in hosts are now in their respective platform directory. For our custom modules, we've added a common directory as well as a hosts directory in which we've moved everything that was in NixOS and added Darwin. Lastly, the introduction of host spec module eliminated the need for config bars and therefore the bars directory is no longer needed. To reflect these changes visually, the NixConfig anatomy diagram has been overhauled to provide a more readable conceptual flow. As always, this and previous versions of the diagram are available on my NixConfig repo. The host spec module itself takes the variables from the old config vars along with some new ones and makes them into proper options using lib.makeOption. As you can see, there are several isFoo flags, including the original isMinimal, that can be used throughout the config to dynamically assign expressions based on differing host spec declarations. The home option dynamically sets the path of the primary user's home based on the host's platform, allowing us to remove every instance of this line that was littered throughout the config. Some of the options available in host spec currently aren't leveraged, but we created them in anticipation of scenarios where we would want to handle them down the road. Granted, there is some added complexity in this approach, but the end goal is a personalized config for multiple hosts where the vast majority of the configuration for a newly added host occurs by declaring host spec options. With the defaults of host spec module, many configs will only need to set a few options. For example, here are the relevant sections of code that set up the host spec options for the updated minimal configuration next file. The declaration for this minimal config is similar to what I have for my hosts. It specifies the machine and primary usernames while also setting up a flag to indicate that it is a non-production minimal configuration. Here's an example of my daily driver computer ghost. As you can see, we indicate that this host will use YubiKeys and that its monitors support HDR. The obvious omission here compared to the minimal configuration we just showed is there's no username. The other host spec options for this host get set in core where my primary user info gets added along with some private values from Nix secrets. We'll come back to what's going on with the import section in a moment, but first let's talk about the host spec options that are set here. Of particular note is that we inherit some specific attributes from inputs.nix secrets. The flake file in my private Nix secrets repo declares a bunch of attributes that house private data such as my personal email and networking information. These soft secrets aren't sensitive enough to bother encrypting in the soft 
props files, but storing them in the private repo and then inheriting them into hostspec allows the info to be used throughout the Nix config without actually publicly exposing it. This way we can do things like foo equals hostspec.networking.subnets, a specific host, and then the IP, for example. It may be worth noting that the same thing was done previously with config vars, but I don't think I covered how to achieve that in any of my previous content. Now that the Nix Secrets reference repository has been posted, as I mentioned in the previous video, you can go in and see examples of how I set up these soft secrets along with documentation. So now let's look at an example of referencing host spec options throughout the Nix config. This is the development module of my personal home configuration, and it provides several example uses of host spec options that dynamically configure the output. As you can see, host spec is accessed through config. The use YubiKey and iswork flags are used to conditionally configure options, which are only applicable when those flags are true in the relevant host spec declaration. There are a lot of other examples of this throughout the next config. You just have to search for host spec in the repo, and you should find lots of them. Now let's get back to the import section of the common core snippet that we looked at earlier. You'll note that the let binds determine the platform and the name of the platform modules, either Darwin modules or NixOS modules, used by the home manager and SOPSNIX inputs. These are all used in the imports call to dynamically import the appropriate custom modules directory, the specific modules within core, either nixos.nix or darwin.nix, and a platform specific user config for the primary user. This is initially admittedly a bit of a pain to sort through because it splits a single default.nix file within core and users into three separate files, being default, nixos, and darwin. Any options that apply to both platforms stay in default, while any options that are platform specific obviously go in their respective file. A similar splitting of options occurs at the home level, for example in my home TA common core, however in this case there's only a single platform specific file as opposed to directories. As you can see, we set a let bind based on the is Darwin flag from host spec, and then we import the relevant platform file along with all of the other core home manager files. The added benefit of using host spec is we can do away with editing our flake file for each host. We moved the inputs to the bottom of the file as they're the least often reference portion of the file, and we removed any host specific declarations so that the output's attributes import or read the relevant parent directories elsewhere in the next config. For comparison, here's a stripped down version of the old flake file and an example of the relevant sections of the new flake file. As you can see, the host configuration section at the end of the old version has been replaced with two functions that read the contents of nixconfig slash hosts and dynamically declare either Darwin configurations or Nix configurations based on the appropriate platform. The functions effectively determine the platform based on the relevant directories and then set up the host declarations accordingly. With these functions in place, we're able to focus our attention specifically on the host files themselves when adding or editing hosts with no need to manipulate the flake file. Lastly, you'll notice that the makehost function we created extends lib with lib.custom. Prior to this, our custom library was initially accessed via config lib. This always felt a tad clunky, in part because it required passing in config lib everywhere it was needed, often in addition to the built-in lib. To make the solution a bit more elegant, we opted to extend lib itself so that our custom functions can be accessed using lib.custom.foo. Previously, an example usage would have looked something like this. Note the need for both lib and config lib in the argument section. Then you can see that lib is used to access flatten, while config lib is used to access our custom relative to root function. By extending lib with our custom library, we can now achieve the same results as follows. We only need to pull in lib, and both flatten and our custom relative to root can be accessed through lib, the latter via lib.custom. That's all for this one. I hope you found it useful or inspiring. As always, I'm incredibly thankful for all of the comments, questions, and encouragement, and a huge thank you to all of the incredible supporters who helped make this possible. If you're down in the dumps for whatever reason, just keep going. Try to focus on all of the positive things in life we have to enjoy, and don't dwell on the negative, despite how insurmountable it seems at times. See you in the next one, and remember, the way out is through.